I have been addicted to pain pills ever since I retired from the NFL. We put Ray through a specialized rehab program we have for retired players and got him off the pain pills. I'm happy to report he's been doing fantastic. Now he's got a great career. I'm thinking maybe a right tackle. And then there are the ongoing <gasps> challenges with Ray. Ray is going to be in chronic pain for the rest of his life. So keeping that pain in check without the use of narcotics is very challenging. For me to think about taking one painkiller, I'm afraid if I take one, you won't never see me again. How are you feeling? Not good. Like what, not good? Tell me. Nervous, pain, aggravation, anger, all of the above. The day before the NFL draft, and I get this call last night from Ray Lucas, who is in excruciating pain from his neck injury. And he's like, Jen, you, you got to do something. I've got to be on the set tomorrow. I got to broadcast the draft. Am I going to be doing the same shit we did before, where I'm getting epidurals and then I'm getting toward all shots just to live? It's just I'm tired of being in pain, you know what I mean? One is enough enough. Now you read about all these guys who kill themselves. I get it. I get it. I need to find a way to get Ray some pain relief. And herein lies the problem with a case like Ray's. Like so many of the players we work with, Ray's an addict. And that starts usually back when they play. Guys are over-medicated, given painkillers at high, high doses, and that carries on into their life after football, and they build up such a tolerance to pain medication that what would take a normal person 10 could take a guy like Ray 20, 30, 40. At five, 10, 15 Norco, just to get me out there. For example, when Randy Grimes came to pass for a knee replacement, he was also addicted um, to painkillers at the level of 1,000 plus pills a month. And he's a full-blown addict, and that makes it very difficult to troubleshoot pain. I'll see a little better now. I actually was in the OR for the knee replacement and in the recovery room right after surgery. I don't think I've ever seen anyone in so much pain. Damn. Damn. Randy's tolerances were so high and um, he was unable to be properly medicated post-operatively for his pain. He pushed that morphine button. He would just like hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. They're absolutely nothing. Why can't they give me a little more? It's not that they're giving you anything, Randy. It's the stuff they're giving you is not working. Open the thing up. And just increase it. It's morphine. They just couldn't medicate him at the level he was used to medicating himself at. And uh, he suffered greatly. So with Ray Lucas, we learned from Randy's experience. And now we have a big focus on how to deal with pain without the use of narcotics. Ray, you might feel a little pressure. I'm going to inject the medicine. You feel it, right? Yeah. Right side, left side? Oh, uh, yeah. These pain management injections Both will numb sides, the nerves yeah. in Ray's spinal cord yeah, and done. might get yeah, him right. through the draft. Almost done, Ray. Oh. OK, all done. Thank you, boys. No Is that remote still there, honey? Can I, yes. can I clear the volume up? Sure, absolutely. Get my study on right now. Don't you think it's ironic? You're lying here in a hospital bed so that you can work the draft tomorrow for a bunch of kids who may be lying on the same hospital bed 10 years from now? I think about the fact that I'm in a clinic right now and I'll be on TV tomorrow. No one will know that at 1 o'clock on Wednesday, I was in the clinic getting, you know, a four inch needle stuck in my neck to take the pain away. Oh, this is so much better. I knew it had already been a really long day for oh. Ray, but before he was going to go home and study for the draft, I asked him if he could help me with a new intake. This guy. <laughs> and it turns out this guy, Mario Henry, had known Ray and played with him at Rutgers before he went on to play in the NFL for the Bills in New England. Everybody has some kind of injury from the career, you know, because while you're out there, all you was told was suck it up. 
Suck yep. it up. Come on. Come on. And then so you know you do it. Just like all these concussions. Wait, do you believe that there's more concussions now than when we were playing? Or do you just think that that was just a bell rung? Well, they called it burners. You got tweaked. Yeah. It wasn't called again. There was no concussion test on the sideline. Nothing. Well, there was, actually. It was, are you all right? Yeah. Okay, go back in. <laughs> Man, this is like such a great charity. And then there should, if you guys exist, it's showing that they're not caring about us when we finish with their, when they're done using us. That's the NFL rule, not for long. Terry is one of the first Samoans to blaze through that trail to the NFL. Oh, great play. Terry Dakota. The only bad part about football is concussion. Terry Titolo is still down. It does feel like my husband was taken away from me. I am homeless. The more I'm finding out about concussions and brain damage in the NFL, it makes sense.